soar to glory in high-tech aircraft. The evil Project 4 has torn freedom from the people of Aslan. Mercenaries control the entire country except for a tiny airfield. But this field is headquarters for the best fighter pilots in the world. UN Squadron. You must destroy all eight of Project 4's bases as you force back an overpowering enemy war machine. Dogfight a wolf pack of stealth fighters in a battlefield in the clouds. Strafe enemy tanks. A giant missile launcher, laser cannon, and desert aircraft carrier. Hammer at your plane. Counter-strike with missiles, thunder lasers, napalm, and bombs. Lead an airstrike for freedom. And this is UN Squadron with some really not appropriate for what's going on in the game box art from Capcom September of 1991 also known as Area 88 in Japan there you go and looking at the uh, box art for the or the flyer for the arcade version also not very good um, this is this is a, a great game it's hard I, I find UN Squadron to be really difficult um, cuz it I don't know something about it's just a little weird let's let's read some more UN Squadron, originally 1989 side-scrolling shooter from Capcom for the CPS Arcade in Japan, uh, came out for the SNES in 1991. Uh, the game was released in Japan as Area 88 and is based on a manga series of the same name, featuring the same main characters. Here, their mission is to stop a terrorist group known as Project 4. It was followed by a spiritual successor, Carrier Air Wing. It's a typical side-scrolling shooter going against the trend of other Capcom shooters such as 1942 and 43 which are vertically scrolling. However, like other Capcom shooters, the player has an energy bar that is consumed over a single life as the player sustains damage. This trait is highly uncommon among other comparable arcade style shooters excuse me, which normally use a system of reserved lives where one of which is lost upon a single enemy hit. Before entering a level, the player can purchase special weapons or add defenses in the shop and you earn money to buy weapons by destroying enemy planes and vehicles during the levels. When the level is finished, any unused weapons are converted back to money. We can choose between three mercenary pilots, Shin Kazama, Mickey Simon, and Greg Gates. Each pilot flies a specific plane and has slightly different capabilities. The game was converted to the SNES and Super Famicom in 91, and unlike the arcade version, each pilot can use a range of planes. All pilots start out with $3,000 and the basic F-8 Crusader, and can buy other aircraft and weapons as the game progresses. Uh, reception. Upon release, the Japanese gaming publication Weekly Famitsu gave the Super Famicom Super Nintendo version a score of 28 out of 40. IGN ranked it as 37th on its top 100 Super Nintendo games list, which made it the highest ranking side-scroller shooter on that list. And Entertainment Weekly gave the Super Nintendo version an A and picked the game as number 12 on the greatest game available in 1991. I like this game very much. I think it looks really good. The music is fantastic. Uh, the graphics are great. The controls are weird. Um, the planes seem to be really sluggish, I think. And you have auto fire to a point. You can hold the button, and your plane will fire X amount of shots and then stop. Then you have to let go and hold the button again. I I kind of understand why it does it. It's just weird. And um, all of that said, though, I mean, it's a great game. I just think this game is really, really hard. I want to say Behold My Strength may have played this a while ago. Uh, friend of the show, Behold My Strength. And if he did, I'm sure he's much, much better at it than I am. 